Hello friends, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to talk about a revolutionary discovery that could change the technological world forever. Have you ever heard of a chip made without silicon? Yes, for the first time, engineers have created a working processor that doesn't have a single drop of silicon. And not only does it work, but it could be the fastest and most efficient chip ever. It sounds like science fiction, but it's pure science, and it could change everything. Because since the 1960s, silicon has been dictating the pace of technological progress. It is the basis of computers, cell phones, satellites, rockets, smart fridges, and even our coffee machines. But silicon is now reaching its limit. It's no longer about evolution. It's physics. It's quantum mechanics. The moment where atoms stop obeying our rules. And right at this point, a heavy and colorful crystal, which looks like psychedelic art, came onto science's radar. So, when electrons start passing through walls, chip miniaturization has really reached a critical point. Today, we're operating on a scale of 3 nanometers, and soon it'll be 2, and after that, even less. But, there's a problem. At this scale, traditional electronics actually start breaking their own laws. Transistors, those tiny switches that turn signals on and off in chips, have become so small that they start behaving like quantum systems. And honestly, this changes everything. Imagine trying to close a door, but the wind still passes through it. That's what happens with electrons. They start a phenomenon called tunneling, quantum tunneling, where particles pass through barriers that technically should be solid. It's kind of like passing through a wall. When this happens inside a chip, control over signals is lost, current leaks, data gets tangled, and performance drops. This is the quantum limit that's silently threatening silicon. No matter how much engineering advances, nature is, well, putting on a break. And that's why scientists started looking for something new, something that not only replaces, but opens completely new paths. And that's where an old acquaintance from the periodic table started shining. The iridescent crystal that could replace silicon. Its name is bismuth. At first glance, it looks like lab decoration, a heavy metal with bizarre geometric shapes and an almost psychedelic shine. But behind this eccentric appearance is an atomic behavior that, honestly, challenges everything we know about semiconductors. Bismuth has a rare property, extremely strong spin-orbit coupling. In simple terms, the spin of electrons, which is a quantum property that works kind of like a direction of rotation, is deeply linked to their movement around the nucleus. And this, well, opens doors to something revolutionary. While silicon controls electrons only by charge, bismuth allows control of spin as well. This really changes the game. Now, instead of just turning a current on and off, we're talking about quantum processing at chip scale. It's the kind of feature that can give birth to new types of transistors, memories, and even qubits. But there's a problem. Bismuth naturally doesn't have a band gap, and this makes it behave like a metal. Without a band gap, there's no switching. And without switching, there's no computational logic. End of the line? No, because there's a solution, doping, which basically means adding chemical elements to bismuth to change its electronic structure. And that's exactly what a Chinese team did, creating the first functional bismuth-based semiconductor, the first silicon-free chip in history. This achievement actually happened in a lab at Peking University, and it was documented in a study published in the journal Nature. There, researchers took bismuth doped with telluride, and, you know, built layer by layer the first functional silicon-free chip in history. But they didn't stop there. This chip wasn't just a proof of concept. 
It was fabricated on the angstrom scale, which is an engineering scale even smaller than 2 nanometers, entering levels where components are measured in units smaller than a silicon atom. To give you an idea, some parts of the transistor are only half a nanometer thick. And that's exactly where silicon collapses, because, you know, below 3 nanometers, quantum effects just mess everything up. But with bismuth, these barriers seem to, well, disappear. More than that, tests showed that this doped bismuth chip can operate at frequencies above 500 gigahertz, while top chips from Intel, Apple, or Samsung barely exceed 5 to 6 gigahertz. This new prototype, it surpasses 500 and doesn't stop there. It also consumes three times less energy and has 40% more switching speed. The comparison data was taken from real transistors from Intel, TSMC, and Samsung. And the bismuth chip, well, it won in everything. Graphene, the invisible wire of the new generation. But bismuth wasn't alone in this turnaround. To connect the transistors of the new chip, engineers used graphene, the thinnest, lightest, and strongest material we know. It's such an efficient conductor that it allows the creation of microscopic connections with practically negligible losses. The result? A completely silicon-free chip with bismuth transistors and graphene interconnections. Every layer is built with atomic precision. And you know, every detail is carefully considered for the post-silicon era. But honestly, manufacturing it is a whole different story. In the architecture used, called gate around, the transistor channels are completely surrounded by the control electrode, which, well, demands millimetric engineering. Just imagine building a sheet that's half a nanometer thick and then wrapping it in another sheet that's just as thin, all without even being able to see the bottom side. This level of precision was only possible by alternating layers of bismuth and graphene, one over the other, until they could stack four transistors in a single block. And to make sure performance isn't compromised, everything was actually mounted on a silicon base, but only as mechanical support. No active part of the chip uses silicon at all. It's like, you know, watching the birth of a new type of electronics, where the colorful crystal and pure carbon replace what has moved the world for decades. The new chip race has already begun. The tests left no doubts. The bismuth chip outperformed the world's largest manufacturers on three critical fronts, speed, energy efficiency, and electrical leakage control. So these three variables, they really define the future of processors and, honestly, even more than that, they define who will lead the next digital revolution. And, well, in this game, China has actually taken the lead. The pioneer study, you know, came from Peking University. China holds more than 70% of the world's bismuth reserves. It's a resource that, until now, was just kind of curious but now it becomes truly strategic. In other words, if this type of chip really scales up, whoever controls bismuth is going to control the next leap in computing. It's no coincidence that giants like TSMC are already moving. In partnership with MIT and the National University of Taiwan, TSMC has also started testing bismuth as a contact material for new generation transistors. This shows that the movement has begun and there's no turning back. By the way, such turnarounds based on new materials have always been the pattern. It was like that with copper, with silicon, with germanium, and now with bismuth. And while engineers reinvent the base of hardware, another transformation is underway in software. The rise of artificial intelligence as a tool for creation, analysis, and automation. If you haven't started mastering these tools yet, honestly, 
you're losing more than just time. You're losing space. Our course, AI, the new gold of the internet, teaches exactly how to use AI to generate income, produce content, set up systems, and accelerate projects, even if you've never programmed before. And upon enrolling, besides learning in depth, you directly support the channel. The post-silicon era has begun, but right now, it's still in the lab. Despite all this advancement, we're not yet talking about a product that's ready for consumption. The bismuth chip is a prototype. It works, beats benchmarks, but still depends on an entire ecosystem that really isn't mature yet. Producing doped bismuth in high purity, creating layers with atomic precision, aligning graphene on an industrial scale. These are all huge challenges ahead. So all this is still, you know, really far from the robustness of the silicon production chain. Silicon, well, it has decades of standardization, dedicated equipment, suppliers, refining infrastructure, and those super-optimized factories, while bismuth is still kind of crawling along. Adaptation here would require new machines, new processes, and maybe even new factories. All of this is pretty expensive, and it honestly takes a lot of time, but the signal has been given. And just like every historical transition, this one too will start small, academic, slow, and mostly restricted to research centers and military prototypes until, you know, suddenly someone finds a way to scale. And when that happens, the market logic will change with the same force that changed when we left vacuum tubes behind and embraced the transistor. The question is no longer whether we will replace silicon. The question now is, who will be the first to turn this technology into industrial hegemony? So, the future is being written in crystals and atoms, bismuth graphene vertical architectures, and, well, frequencies exceeding 500 gigahertz. We're no longer talking about gradual evolution. We're seeing the beginning of a new paradigm. Just as silicon replaced germanium and chips replaced vacuum tubes, this new generation of materials can open paths we can't even foresee yet. Faster chips, thinner, smarter, perhaps even more conscious, but no revolution happens alone and no technology is born perfect. The success of bismuth now depends on something bigger than the lab. It depends on industry, investment, engineering, politics, and, well, time. And perhaps, like other big turnarounds, it also depends on who is most attentive when the tectonic plates of the market start to move. Now tell me, what do you think? Will silicon last another decade, or are we witnessing the birth of its replacement? Share your opinion in the comments, and if this video gave you a new perspective, like and share. This helps the channel continue bringing content with this depth. See you in the next episode.